Welcome back to your regularly scheduled corporate cowboys. This is season seven, episode 11. And we're coming up right up behind having gotten finished reading to you an audiobook. If you are interested in what book that was, that was The Naked Corporation. And if you would like to hear more about it, well, shit, start at season seven, episode one. I may or may not get hit for having said it in the first 30 seconds, but I mean, I I really, (laughs) this podcast is for free, fam. And while I'm alive, at least while I'm pushing it, anything that comes my way, I'm reinvesting. All right. So here to, uh, to legal expenses and business fees. Hey, hey, hey. Or is it to business expenses and legal fees? <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started. This is a question. It's coming from r slash career guidance, right? So if you're not familiar with the Corporate Cowboys podcast thus far, the first couple of seasons were literally self-help for myself, really, just to find my voice, be able to verbalize and orate in a way and and find my balance as far as whether or not I should speak to you in a professional manner or in a casual manner. Do I want to be that cool acquaintance that you can come to with your problems and issues? And if you do have them, well, shit, shoot them to me. You can DM us at at Corporate Cowboys with a Z on Instagram. You could also follow us on Patreon. Patreon, there are a couple of tiers on there, and I'm not making it uberly expensive. I'm keeping it within our denominations range, right? From zero to 100. That's it and that's that. If you want something exclusive, you're gonna have to reach out to us for a one-to-one, some type of consultation, coaching, what have you. You can write to us. That's P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95741. (laughs) That being said, this Free 30-minute consultation. I mean, I'll still still keep it at 30 minutes. Uh, Even though I've eaten into the time, I will give you the 30 minutes because you know I'm known to run over time. I'm just handing out the game for free on the most illicit corporate moves possible, right? Some of them might be out of left field. Some of them might be coming from personal experience. Some of them I might have, uh, you know, chopped the game up with a couple other associates, (laughs) and we spitball a working strategy. Anyways, none of this is legal advice. Might be professional, but not legal advice, okay? I'm not an expert in your life until I learn about your life, so (laughs) you can't blame me for nothing. All right, this question says, how do you say no? Professionally, professionally enough. So pushy bosses slash coworkers leave you the fuck alone. It doesn't say the fuck, but I mean, you want to be left alone, right? To, to work autonomously, to mind your own business, to be able to deliver the work product that's expected of you without taking on anybody else's because, yo, you make yourself available. You let yourself be known, get that reputation for putting in dumbass amounts of work and being good at it. <laughs> and they'll just start pawning off and requesting that you help and that you assist them at every turn. That being said, the body reads as such. It's asking for advice. It says, I've noticed people who don't respect boundaries at work have a hard time accepting the phrase no, or I'm unable to take this on right now, right? <laughs> and they keep asking, quote, why not? Or wanting or waiting for more info, right? They're wanting to know why. They're wanting to know more. It's as if they want to plan your schedule for you. I get it. I get it. I've been there. I've been there. What do you professionally say in the corporate world to get out of this situation? <laughs> Yo, good question. Good question, right? Because if you're not working on yourself, if you're not working on your career, somebody else is asking you to work on theirs for them. Fuck all of that. Unless you're taking a piece of the change, a piece of their pie, a piece of the credit, you're having your name added onto their work product. So you get a little shine, get a little recognition, right? You want to be known. You want your name to spread. You want your name to get around. 
not just amongst your coworkers, not just between your you and your supervisors, but you want it to go up and you want it to go out, right? You want to make waves. You want to make moves outside of the organization. There's a way to do it. Let me explain. You see, when they ask whether or not, I want to say it's simple, right? You're a professional. You're managing your time. You're organizing your own schedule. You're organizing your day, your week, your month around whatever projects you have on hand, right? You've got deadlines. Some are short-term, mid-term, long-term, and you're prioritizing which ones you should be minding, which ones require your immediate attention, which ones are the most urgent, which ones you can delay by a little bit, right? Until new facts come to light until developments and updates come down the pipeline for you to be able to act. Well, you report exactly that. Sure, you can say, yeah, why not? I can do that. Or sure, absolutely. I'll have this for you by <laughs> this day, right? You can, you can, you can uh, compromise yourself. You can overpromise. You can overcommit. And you're going to end up drowning. I mean, you can try to swim, but you'll be doggy paddling and half-assing a lot of work, producing mediocre work product. And unless, unless you can compensate for it somehow with some other value that you bring to the organization, (laughs) shoddy work product is not it. That's not the move. That's not the move. You were hired for a reason. And unless you can work around your duties and obligations for your position, unless you can work around them somehow, you've got to work through them. What do you do? What do you do? Your contract, your agreement is both the sword and the shield, right? You are the professional behind either the weapon or the defense. Now, I'm not saying you're going on the defensive like, oh, I'm too busy. I can't take this on right now, right? You don't want to appear overwhelmed. That's reactive. That's defensive. You are the assertive corporate cowboy. You let them know that your plate is full and you're eating. What the fuck are they doing? Why are they giving you more work? Now, now, hold on, hold on. That is a very aggressive play, right? Unless you're experienced with how your organizational culture operates, how it runs, what the hierarchy looks like, exactly what strings you can pull, what levers you can actuate. I wouldn't go that route. That's for experts. Yeah? Understood? You use your agreement as common ground and you build from there. You let them know which projects you are prioritizing and why they are important. If you want to share with them your deadlines, me personally, I don't share my deadlines with a lot of folks. Why? Because even to me, they're tentative, right? I could be done with work earlier, earlier than expected, earlier than anticipated, or I could be delayed by something unforeseen, something I did not plan, right? And if my supervisor absolutely has to know, if my coworker wants to know, I mean, I could share them depending on how I could leverage the information on how I could leverage my priorities in relation to theirs. Because if they want to pawn off work onto me, I may or may not be able to slide it in. May May or may not be able to squeeze it into my own agenda somehow. I could roll it up into my repertoire. (laughs) <laughs> right? If I'm the one lending a hand, if I'm the one who appears to have excess bandwidth because, I don't know, God forbid I make the shit look easy, right? But I'm pumping dumb amounts of work, but I just make it look easy somehow. <laughs> They're going to want to know why I can't take on their project. Why Alex? Why Alex cannot take on their project when they seem to be ahead of everyone else? They seem to be ahead of the curve. They seem to know the ins and the outs better than others in the organization. What is this guy doing? What is this dude up to that he can't help me right now? That he can't 
reprioritize his own shit to help me. I'm his coworker. I've been here longer. I'm his senior. I'm his supervisor, his boss. What do you do? You come back at them with reality. You check them on their own shit. You let them know where your priorities lie in relation to the organization. Fuck, regardless of the hierarchy, regardless of the fact that you have to report to them, right? That's all you have to do. You have to report to them. And until they give you a reason to follow their lead, I mean, they got to be a fucking leader to do that, right? Until they give you a reason to follow their every direction, all you're doing is reporting. <laughs> Let them know what your priorities are in terms of projects, in terms of updates and actual events taking place in reality. I mean, you want to remain grounded. And at times, your supervisor, your coworkers, they're not operating in reality. I don't know, maybe they just got off the phone looking at memes or cupcaking with some bitch or some dude, right? And now they want to pawn off this work on you because you appear to have extra bandwidth. You don't look busy, but you and I both know that you stay busy and you stay working. So the fact that they have you now, just all of a sudden in their sight picture, they want to give you more work. The fucking audacity. <laughs> of course, you don't want to approach them <laughs> in that in that tone, with that tone, right? Again, that is for experts. But for the entry-level professional, which is everybody, right? It doesn't hurt to be the most reasonable person in the room. And so you can say no. But two letters are loud as fuck. Just saying no. You want to back it up with something tangible, something emotional, something logical, something reputable. I mean, what's more reputable than the company's reputation, than the organization's reputation, the projects that you've been assigned already and that you are working diligently? You want to give them some updates? Give them updates on the projects you already have and why they're important, right? It's going to take a little finessing. It's going to take a little practice. It's going to take a little bit more professional development on your part as far as socialization goes. Or is it socializing? Yeah, socializing, social interaction. You're going to have to go into your toolbox and be able to emphasize your contributions. And why, and why your contributions are limited in regards, in, in respect to their priorities, right? Because their priorities are their own projects, are their own assignments. The fact that they want to pawn them off on you means that they want to minimize their own contributions on their own assignments, right? I don't get emotional about it. I don't think... Ah, this bitch, this motherfucker wants to pawn off the work on me because they don't want to do shit, right? No, no, it it could, you know, it could be something that I am not privy to at all. Some kind of development that caused them to fall behind a little bit on, on a time schedule. And now they require assistance. And I may be more than willing to lend a hand, like I said previously. If and when I stand to contribute in a positive, in a beneficial manner, not just to the organization, but to my own development, how I can incorporate it into my priorities. I mean, if it's some exigent favor, right? I mean, you know, you know how it is out here. It's favor for a favor for mob figures or whatever. <clears throat> If it's something at a left field, something that you have to go out of your way for, a favor, it more than likely is not job related. It more than likely is not work related. It might be something extracurricular, extra legal, right? And that's and that's an episode for another day. <laughs> right now we're talking about the corporate world. So we're going to cabin our discussion here to what the question asked. 
which is within the context of corporate. So as a corporate cowboy, what do you have? You got a fucking revolver and a knife, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's bring it back. Let's scale it back a little bit. And what you have, those tools, those tools that you have to interact and handle clients, you also have to interact with and handle your coworkers, your supervisors. I've said this before. Service doesn't just go out. It also goes in and up. The service folks believe they provide to the quote customer, you also give that to your coworker. There's coworker service, there's supervisor service, manager service, right? You have to maintain this front of professionalism. You are representing the organization. When you're dealing with your coworker, you're representing a facet, a corner of the organization, your corner, right? So you're getting your work done. When you're speaking with your manager, you're representing, again, the organization, your corner, and the work being done in it. So if their corners are crumbling, right, they can't keep up the front. And for some folks, it's a fucking facade, right? It's a mask they hide behind. They could show up for the check only and not give a fuck about the work, which is why you might find them, which is why you might see them pawning it off to others, trying to pawn it off to you. What do you do? Not fold, not crumble, not get overwhelmed. Don't sink. You're swimming. This shit is easy. It's like water off of a duck's back. (laughs) Remain professional. Let them know what it is you're up to. Of course, of course, you may want to compartmentalize some information, maybe withhold it for personal use, for personal and professional development sake. I don't know what the ethics for private information disclosure are, you know, depending on what degree, what industry you're operating in in terms of the projects you've taken on, the clients you're handling and interacting with. And it doesn't hurt you. It can't hurt you to be a professional about saying no, to be reasonable when you do it. (laughs) You can't be hurt. Now, if they want to make a stink about it, if they want to... I don't know, hit you for subord- insubordination, right? Because they're trying to subordinate you further than whatever you've already agreed to, right? They're, they're trying to pile on the work more than you've agreed to, right? If, if it becomes something else, they are intentionally trying to sink your ass, right? They write you up for, uh, I don't know, something stupid, like not, not, quote, not being a team player or some fucking bullshit like that. And it's happened. I've seen it. (laughs) I've borne witness to that. It it happens. It happens. If that happens, still can't hurt you professionally. You know what your reputation was like in the organization, which is why you've got to be social. You've got to learn to network. A corporate cowboy does it all. They're running and gunning, shooting from the hip. So you know how to relate with your colleagues. You know how to relate with others in the organization. If the shit ever rolls downhill to the point where somehow, some way, your job is in danger, folks know who the fuck you are. You can't, you cannot get blackballed that way. I mean, you can get blackballed via a conspiracy, but folks are going to be conspiring against you, not the other way around. It, it won't be a theory. That shit will be actual, factual. <laughs> and I've seen that too. I've seen that too within circles. You might get, and, and, and even if, and this is again, verging on the point of extreme, even if you do get blackballed, 
folks outside of the circle, outside of that sphere of influence from individuals or organizations who claim to, uh, to blackball you, they can see through the bullshit. Folks are awake to what corporate is about, to the corporate politics, to the hustle, to the, the corporate ladder, to the life. When folks say, you ain't about that life on the street, right? Dog, you ain't about that death. <laughs> that was a funny saying. Uh, a homie of mine brought that up one time. He said, he said, he said, when, when fools, when folks tell you that you ain't about that life, right? You just come back with, you just come back at them with, dog, you ain't about that death, right? But that's, I mean, that's a form of escalation, right? I mean, and, and rarely, rarely do you as a corporate cowboy, rarely do you as a professional want to escalate things because like I've said in past episodes, <clears throat> prejudice is a last resort. It should be a last resort. Violence is a last resort. It should be a last resort. Working extra legal, it should be a last resort. I mean, for some, it's a second nature. For some, it's first option. It should be a last resort, though. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at these comments real quick because I myself am interested in what others have to say, what others have experienced in corporate, you know, being a social researcher of sorts myself, being a consultant, a counselor of sorts myself. I'm always interested. So the first comment here is actually a quote. And it pretty much says, I am doing, quote, this is a quote. I am doing A, B, and C right now. I can prioritize D if it is more urgent. Which of the other tasks should I pass to a coworker or put on hold until I finish with D? Okay, so then in this quote, I see. In this quote, D is the work that's being added to your load already. And if you have to recalibrate somehow, if, if somehow you saying no doesn't work, if somehow you putting up a professional front and being reasonable doesn't work and you're required to take on this additional project because it happens too, right? The project might be really important and you are trusted. It's coming from a place of trust. This here, this response is the most reasonable. Reprioritizing what you have going on but then also asking for a little balance in return. What of the projects or which ones of the assignments, the tasks that you have now, that you have and are working on currently, can you pass on or delegate to somebody else? Which of those priorities are the least demanding, are the least urgent, are the least important? That someone else can do in your absence of attention, that is. I mean, you may still be there physically, but if you have to reprioritize work because you've been given an additional, more important, more urgent project, you would like them to know that you're not just going to fuck off on all your other work. You're still cognizant. You're still considerate of the load that you have currently. And if the bandwidth just isn't there to work them all concurrently, to work them all at the same time, say, hey, somebody's got to pick up the slack. Somebody's got to pick it up because you've now got to reprioritize this new assignment, this new work that's been handed off to you. And shit, if folks hand you off work that's important to them, work that you're trusted with, dog, if you're handed the ball, you run with it. This next comment says, my old manager would do this. She would give me work, then come back 15 minutes later and give me different stuff. That just sounds like a shit boss. I would just take it and quietly drown until I started saying, <laughs> until I started saying I have 
I have to do, wait, I have this other two, what? I have this other two other task. I have this two other task. What should I prioritize? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fucked up the way it's typed. Not my bad. But that last sentence there, it's asking, what should I prioritize? And that's good. I probably would not wait until I'm fucking drowning in work to ask for priorities, which work I can prioritize. I think as the work is coming in, you ask for deadlines. You ask for deadlines up front. Why? Because it's those deadlines that you're working around. You ask for degrees of importance, levels of importance, because some projects may have deadlines a bit away and might still be more important than a deadline you have tomorrow. Because there's groundwork, there's preparation that needs to be done in order for success at the end of this longer term project. This comment continues and it says, I don't think these are the type of people that are deep thinkers. So they often just want to assign work to whoever and have it off of their to-do list. Yeah, I think so too. I I think so too. But then it's also your fuck up for accepting it. And just whatever they say, hey, Alex, uh, do this for me. And then 15 minutes later, they say, Alex, do this other thing. And, And I'm just like, yes, yes, I'll do this. Yes. Yes, if I'm <laughs> if I'm always saying yes, I'm fucking up. I'm not taking in oxygen. I'm not taking in fuel. I'm not, I'm not taking in rest. I mean, I'm not a machine, right? Even though I might work with one, I'm not a machine. They also get annoyed if you push an important job to do their task. Well, I mean, that sounds like a manager you can't satisfy, right? But again, if you're not vocal about it, if you're not verbal, if you're not verbalizing professionalism, letting them know, asking them for a direction, asking them for a bit of guidance, because if they're just going to toss you some work and not give you anything with it, if they're going to toss me some work and not give me anything with it, you don't know. You don't, maybe they don't want to know how far I'll run with it, <laughs> how far I'll run it, how deep my name goes. I have my name all over that shit and I'll make myself known ahead of the organization, right? They ought to put the reins, they ought to put the reins on the horse and I'm not the horse in this sense. Again, I'm a corporate motherfucking cowboy. So they will also get annoyed if you push an important job to do their task. I mean, just ask, just ask, be a professional, be reasonable. The most reasonable in the room rarely gets clipped, right? If you got clipped for being the most reasonable, you know, it's because they needed a scapegoat. And at that point, I don't know, you go fucking John Rambo, Chris Dorner, you know what I mean? (laughs) But that's the last resort. That's the last resort. (laughs) They will also get annoyed. uh, Just come back with facts. Okay. Just come back with facts. I have this task to do for this person. It should take about half a day unless there is some issue. I can then start this task, or would you prefer I start with this one? However, this will mean we miss deadlines on this task. Yo, I okay, so that's that's good. The way this person wrote this comment is somewhat incoherent. It's as if it were a stream of consciousness, but I understand it. I get it. What you want to do is is like I actually mentioned earlier, hit them with reality. Let them know what's on your plate, what you're eating at the moment. And if they want you to cook something else up, what, you're just going to walk away from your hot plate and step back into the kitchen and whip something up while your food gets cold? Are you going to stop eating? (laughs) Damn, that was a sick analogy. That's a sick analogy, Alex. I might take that to the bank. And lastly, it says, make them make the decision and then it will be on them to explain if you get questioned about it later. I like that. And always, always, always get that shit in writing. You want evidence. You want a record. You want receipts for that shit. Because if it, for whatever reason, backfires, if 
<laughs> you don't want to be left holding the gat because that's not a smoking gun. That's a fucking grenade. <laughs> See, what time is it? That shit was 30 minutes on the money. I'm going to cap it right there, folks. If you have any comments, any consideration, you're enjoying the content so far because season seven may just be the best yet. It's constantly getting better. You want to start at season one, episode one, probably the best episode I ever made back in the day, right? Titled The Skeleton Key, Chef's Kiss. (laughs) Thank you very much for having joined me this time. Proof of Life, Wednesday, February 1, February 1st, 2023. I appreciate you all. There's some links out there in the bio somewhere. I'm sure you can find them. Shoot us a dollar. Shoot us a hundred. Shoot us a mil if you're in the one percentage. (laughs) You're paying for admission to the corporate war. Yours truly, a corporate cowboy. I'll catch you next time.